Welcome to Cedar Fort Publishing and Media Behind the Scenes. I'm your host, Valerie Loveless, and today I have with me Aspen Hadley, author of Simply Starstruck and Blind Dates, Bridesmaids, and Other Disasters. Welcome, Aspen. Thank you. I'm excited to be here. I'm excited to have you here as well. I love speaking with other romance authors. <laughs> um, but let me tell you a secret about me being a romance author. Um, I actually don't read a lot of romance. How about really? you? Really? I read a ton of romance. What kind of romance do you read? Well, I'm, oh my gosh, like everything. <laughs> Sometimes I'm like, let's maybe break out of the romance genre and give some other things a try. <laughs> and then you go right back to romance. And then I'm like, well, that was good. That cleansed the palate, but now we're back. <laughs> oh, I, <see. laughs> I really like lighthearted, uplifting mm-hmm. You know, I want to laugh. I want to not be embarrassed if, like, my children come across my books, um, what I'm reading, meaning. So I tend to read a lot of historical because it runs clean. So you like the Regency and... Yeah. I like contemporary if it it can stay cleaner. Yeah. Which is tough to find. It is. And that's what your books are, right? They're contemporary and they're clean. Yeah. They're contemporary. They're clean. They're, I would consider them like a romantic comedy. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of laughs, a lot of fun. Kind of what I would want to read. Right. You know? And it's hard to find. But um, YA romance is kind of fun sometimes, too. Although, I mean, I'm in my 40s now, so I feel a little detached. (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, oh, yeah, people feel that way. But I've kind of moved past some of those Twitter pagan stages. Yeah, so. I, I'm kind of, I'm near 40 as well. Mm-hmm. Um, do we admit I'm gonna, that? I'm going to cut that yeah, part let's out. Do. Let's cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> We're near 30. <laughs> and um, I kind of struggle with that too. Like, if, if I, f- I feel like a good romance novel has to be like a younger group, right? Right, right. But I also want to write about like, adults too i usually yeah. choose like 19 to 30 uh-huh. as my age range right. because it makes me feel kind of comfortable but right. I'm, I'm even out of that age, age range now so right. i feel kind of weird about it <laughs> <laughs> i mean we still feel love at this phase in yeah, our lives so maybe we should do something about that should. because i bet you most people who read romance novels in the first place are in our age group i would think so because that's when you can like afford to buy the books you want to buy (laughs) and you can carve out a little time Mm -hmm. well I mean sort of I mean we just do it you need to carve out that time right (laughs) whether we can or not is not the point we just make the time I would not be surprised if the reading demographic is older than the characters I'm gonna look into this we should I bet I bet there's got to be a way the Cedar Fort can look into this. I mean, if, this if someone could, it should be the book publisher. Right. It should, it, it should be them. <laughs> yeah, we should definitely look into that because it just feels it just feels weird to me to be writing about people that are so much younger. Right. But that seems to be what sells or that's yeah. what they're telling us is selling anyway. Not well, Cedar Fort, but I mean like I feel like the other media I like is right. telling us that. But I think if you do start to write older characters, you get into some complications that maybe people aren't looking for in novels. That's mm-hmm. You know, cuz my first book um she's actually a widowed mother. She's 29. Now I can't even quote myself. Is she 29? I feel like she is. <laughs> but she has like a 6-year-old, 7-year-old son from a first marriage and I think if you it was interesting talking to people because some people, like in my age bracket, were very comfortable with the mother role as mm-hmm. part of the romance. But like my teenage daughter who read it was like, I liked your second book better just simply because I've never been a parent. I don't really relate to the parenting aspect mm-hmm. of dating with a child. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I think if you started to write older characters, then you begin to bring in, well, do they have children? Do they have divorce? Do they have It gets have a death? lot it's, more complicated, yeah. doesn't it? So it's really it's easy to write a lighthearted romance with a younger character whose life yeah, is still Yeah, and it's simple. like the fresh first love, yes. right? Maybe yes. that's what it, Okay, maybe we shouldn't Maybe we shouldn't try to force the no. older age thing. <laughs> Let's just draw on our first blooms of love experiences yeah. <laughs> that everyone remembers and just have fun with that. Yeah. I notice what a lot of stories, and not, like I said, I don't actually read a lot of romance. Um, that's why I wrote one is because yeah. I wrote one that, like, 
worked for me. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> but um, I noticed that they do a lot of mul- multiple storylines sure. with different age groups. So you kind of do get a little bit of, yeah, you know. Di- and I kind of did that with my sequel, which isn't out yet. But um, she had an – the main character had an older sister, and it was kind of more – the yeah. second one was more about her. her. And yeah. she was like 26 and already a spinster because right. it was Victorian era. So. Right. <laughs> right. Which I think even in our society, I mean, it's very easy. Like my second book, the main character is 27 and feels a little left behind. Mm-hmm. You know, and I was younger than that when I got married, but I have friends and family who didn't get married until into their 30s and they very much felt that. Did they? Yeah, by Were late they 20s. like here in Utah or outside? Yeah, most of them. And I know Utah's a special demographic yeah that utah way, is but, different yeah but it's interesting that you know you can write a story about someone in their late 20s and have them feel that desperation for am i ever gonna find someone which is silly sitting in my 40s now i'm like girl you got time <laughs> like, you're gonna be just fine <laughs> but you can play on that no matter yeah. what you know historical or contemporary i think yeah. That's a natural feeling. Is you've been watching all your friends get married and feel left behind. Mm-hmm. So. One thing, I, I don't know about that because I got married way too young. Right. But one thing. It was thing... like illegal <laughs> for me. <laughs> I don't know what my parents were thinking. Anyway. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't either. I'm like, Mom, Dad, why didn't you try and stop me? And I'm like, oh, yeah, because it was me and there's no way right. they could have stopped that me. That was happening no matter what. But you know what? We're both still married, right? Yes. To the same yep. person. So yep. it worked out. It did. It did. <laughs> it does cause a few complications, but... It can work. (laughs) It can. I mean, if you find a man like I did who's willing to raise you out of your infancy into (laughs) How much older than you is he? Actually, we're the same age. But but I laugh all the time. Like, he is so much more grown up than me. And I just, thanks for raising me, babe. That was real nice of you. That's hilarious. (laughs) Oh, that's so funny. What were we talking about? (laughs) (laughs) Oh, well, it must not have been that important (laughs) if we can't remember. (laughs) That just got me so (laughs) off guard. Oh, okay. So your stories, Mm -hmm. what are these um, sequels? They are not. They are standalone. They're standalone. Yes. Different characters? Different characters, different, yeah, different everything, really. Okay. I mean, romantic comedy, same genre, Mm -hmm. but different characters so what's simply starstruck about so simply starstruck is about the main character her name is kate and she's a complete disaster she (laughs) (laughs) as we all are yes she her husband had passed away about two years ago and she's got a an older unmarried like quite significantly older elderly aunt that brings her to live with her during kind of her get back on your feet phase and a movie star moves in next door and just their antics as she kind of gets pushed back into the dating world. She dates a few different guys. You know, of course she finds her true love. But during all of it, she's just kind of a mess. Just kind of bumbling through it. But very lighthearted. Very fun. Um, discover Kind of comes to find herself again. Which after a tragedy like that is kind mm-hmm. of hard to find your feet again. So it's been, it was a lot of fun. And I used some stories, like real stories from my life in it, which were really fun to write and incorporate in. And, and then I've gone to some book clubs and author events and stuff and have people try to guess (laughs) what of those were true. What were the true stories? So (laughs) that's been really fun. Oh, interesting. (laughs) So with those kind of topics, like being widowed and what did you draw from for those When you were writing about that. So it was kind of interesting. So my brother passed away six, I think we're in six years ago. And him and his wife were married for 10 years before he passed away. And then she got remarried a couple years ago. And just kind of watching her process and seeing how much it really does when you lose that foundational person. Mm -hmm. It really knocks you off your feet and you kind of have to figure out who you are again. And it even had that same effect on me as a sibling, where as a sibling, you kind of, this person isn't always in your life, right? Mm -hmm. And so to have them gone and be like, oh, my foundation cracked a little bit. Who am I moving forward? And so I could kind of relate to what she was going through where she was like, okay, so how am I different? And how am I the same? And who am I 
without him and those kind of things. I didn't delve super deeply into that level of emotion in the book, but I could relate to that kind of in the background, just that general feeling of, oh my gosh, so who am I now? Mm-hmm. And is it okay to move forward? And how do you go about doing that? How does she, how does she feel about that? <laughs> yeah, she comes to find the end. Uh, through the process, she goes to visit his parents toward the end of the book, her deceased husband's parents. And they talk to her about their impressions of who she was with him. And um, she talks to her aunt about who she was before him and stuff. And she kind of comes to find a place where she... She's able to both grab onto who she was in the past, but also marry it to the person that she is now and just kind of heal within herself mm-hmm. and find who she is and who she's comfortable with. And then she can move forward with, you know, a relationship mm-hmm. and finding true love. And So how did you incorporate humor into this? <laughs> <laughs> Well, my family is kind of the worst or the best, as you, (laughs) whatever your opinion is. We use humor in everything. And we laugh and joke our way through all the heartaches of life. I mean, we, we take stuff seriously. We know it's not the best situation. But so it was very natural for me to just, she had funny situations. She gets in these little scrapes and she... Um, her thought processes are a little kind of scattered and and silly and funny, and she still is finding joy and humor in her life, even though the background stuff is hard. And mm-hmm. I just pulled that from my life. That's very much how I go about doing things, to the point where my husband sometimes like, if you want sympathy, like, don't come to this house. <laughs> and I'm like, you're fine. So it it sounds heavier than it is as I'm explaining, because all of that's kind of background, right? stuff that's kind of going on and you pull it a little bit into the story but the main story itself is some of kind of the dating experiences and her thought processes her going from being really kind of uncomfortable in her own skin to accepting who she is and and feeling stronger and empowered and interesting you know usually I try to read a book before the interview but then you know I was talking to you earlier about something else I was like how many words are your book and then when you sent it back to me I was like oh there's no way I'm gonna have time to read right. both of those before right. um our interview but it is yeah. kind of interesting going into it not knowing what yeah. your books are because I feel I really feel like I need to read it now <laughs> well it, yeah it was fun it's been a fun it, that was my first one and that was a really cool experience mm-hmm. cool so how did you decide like did you go into writing this book knowing you wanted it to be published? I've always really liked storytelling. I grew up in a home and an extended family of storytellers. We, uh, my especially on my, well, both sides, really. I was going to say especially my dad's side because we spent a lot of time camping and stuff with my family. And we'd sit around the campfire at night and like, regale each other with our adventure stories of things that had happened or um but my mom's family is very much the same we just aren't out in the forest doing it we're just (laughs) in someone's living room and so I've always really enjoyed storytelling and I've always been a very avid reader from an early age I remember getting grounded from books in junior high because my parents were like, you have to come out of the darkness. Like <laughs> The only thing they can take away from you. Right. Oh, they so, were grounding you because you're reading too much. Yeah, like, oh, okay. it was like, you have to leave your bedroom and come do your chores. Or we've been calling you for dinner. Or, you know, come up. Like, you can't read again for 24 hours kind of thing. Yeah. <laughs> like, you don't want to ground a child from books, but they do have to be part of the yeah. world also. So, um. I just, and then as I got older and stuff, I just thought, wouldn't it be amazing if someday I could be an author too? Because I love reading. I love storytelling. I've actually always written. um, My early married years, I started, because my life is like ridiculous. (laughs) I started uh, the Aspen Adventure Series, and I would email out like weekly emails to my extended family and friends about kind of the dumb things that had happened to me that week and it (laughs) became like this thing and it was super fun and so I've always enjoyed writing and I just thought I'm gonna write but I started writing I wrote my first hating it novel like eight or nine years ago and it was not it didn't go well it 
it was a full length novel. I got it done, but it just wasn't right. And I had a couple beta readers read it and they were like, we like your writing style, but the story's kind of the pits. I'm like, yeah, we can all agree on that. <laughs> <laughs> that is not hurtful, but it was a great learning experience mm-hmm. because it was like, you know, that story didn't gel. It just wasn't. Right. And so this story, Simply Starstruck, the first book, um, I started writing it, oh, like probably five-ish years ago. And then I had a surprise baby kind of in the middle of all of that. And, you know, that tends to, whew, Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> so I came back to it like two, maybe two and a half years ago. And I just decided to finish it. I read the first half and I was like, oh, I like this. This is fun. I'm just going to finish it. And then it was my husband really pushing me and going, come on. You've always said you wanted to be. Why not? Try now. Just do it. And it took me months and months to convince myself to try to do it. And then it worked, which is hysterical. (laughs) (laughs) Like the best. So, uh, yeah. So this book came out a year ago this month. November 13th and then my second book came out this past summer so within the last year I've had two come out which is like more than I ever dreamed yeah it's really exciting that is super exciting yeah so you I I think what I'm getting from you is that you have a different way of looking at things than the average person that you perhaps see humor in things yeah that other people see despair <laughs> you know that, yeah that would be true that would be fair so you have a kind of a are you optimistic or are you just funny like what is it i mean how weird to talk about yourself like that <laughs> <laughs> i'm definitely an optimistic person mm-hmm. i um not in an unkind way but really don't understand the thought process of people who are pessimistic like i'm not trying i don't not like them I'm just like, I genuinely don't don't understand how your brain works that way. Mm-hmm. My brain is just happy, you know? Right. Um, and things are really funny, even when they're not. Right. Like, there's humor to be found in all places, and it's not hard for me to find it. So I can take things seriously. I sound like a terrible person saying <laughs> this. <laughs> I can take things seriously, but it's very easy for me to find the humor. Well, I think that's a better quality is to be able to find the humor in things I hope rather so. than be serious yeah. all the time. I'm not you? overly stressed. <laughs> 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 I mean, life is stressful. There's stuff that happens that's difficult. I am raising four children. Right. And a dog. <laughs> and a dog. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like my fifth child (laughs) and I mean there are definitely stresses that come with life but there's also so much happiness in the Mm -hmm. ridiculousness of it are you just like able to see the outcomes of things better like oh that won't matter you know like everybody thinks of things that happened a long time ago Mm -hmm. and they're like oh well we'll laugh about this in 10 years or whatever But you're laughing about those things now. How, yeah. how do you do that? <laughs> <laughs> Which is hard on my family sometimes. <laughs> if my kids will get, you know, my kids will get embarrassed or something and mm-hmm. I'll just be laughing my head off about. And they're like, this time it wasn't funny. I'm like, it was. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I mean, I think it could come down to that nature nurture talk. I was raised in a very optimistic, upbeat, everything's going to be totally fine mm-hmm. home. And that's very comfortable and natural for me. Um, my husband is my total opposite. He tends to worry about things, and which is good. I think our home probably benefits from having a very grounded, I joke that we're a game of tetherball. He's the pole, mm-hmm. and I'm the ball that's like winging <laughs> all over the place. And I think it's good, but um, it has not ever been a struggle for me. I don't feel like it's something I have to try to find the humor in situations. I just kind of think stuff's do. funny interesting not in a, i'm not a disrespectful or anything it's just life's pretty funny we um my daughter several years ago was getting baptized if she listens to this podcast she will murder me for telling this story <laughs> but she was getting baptized into our church and she um 
the stake center that we were at had this book you're supposed to sign and they want you to sign it in Sharpie marker. And it's the name of every child that's been baptized into that. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And I was chit chatting with someone and she writes her name. And for some reason she feels like her name's the most important name in the whole stake ever. So she takes up like six lines. So it's giant. And I know this is a podcast. So each letter is like a good solid six inches high. <laughs> it's not, this is like a wedding guest book. Uh-huh. So she's taken up like a half a page in black marker and she taps me on the leg and I look over and she's gotten distracted halfway through her name. So our last name is Hadley. Her first name is Cadence, like a drum beat. And she's written Cadence. <laughs> I can't even hardly tell it. Cadence Haydence across. <laughs> It's big, like six inch black sharpie cadence cadence <laughs> and i'm like i look over and i'm like that is the funniest thing i've ever seen and she's like it's not funny people are gonna be so upset i'm like why no one's gonna open that book and be like how dare she <laughs> like, every person ever who opens that is gonna be like that is a hysterical eight-year-old girl like thing nobody's yeah. gonna be mad and it well, just normal people yeah and i could see you know other people in my life being like so embarrassed about that or so upset or oh my gosh that's not good how do we get rid of it what should we do and i just don't think that way mm-hmm. i'm just like that is gonna make someone's day someone is gonna turn <laughs> that page and just be like and yes Kate is hated. Too. She, yeah. someday she'll laugh at it and too. she does now the other day i said something about it and it's been sick i don't even know how old she is six ish years and she was like, it's funny now. I'm like, oh, good. <laughs> it was funny then, too. <laughs> I think learning to, I remember when I learned to laugh at myself, mm-hmm. life became so much easier. Yeah. And yeah. just like, if you trip or say something yeah. ridiculous, it's just so, life is so much better if you it can is. just laugh at yourself and realize that. Everybody is ridiculous. Everybody's a mess. A majority of the time. (laughs) (laughs) Everybody. And if you can just be, even if you can be the leader of that and show people in your life, like, it's totally fine. Mm -hmm. I am still lovable. I am still, I still have a lot of worth and value, even though I'm a major disaster. Even though I fall downstairs and, (laughs) you know, whatever else. I mean, there's... Well, and now I'm worried because we've got to get you downstairs to get out of <laughs> you here. You should be worried. I'll get some help. Before we, before you leave, let me go grab some help. And it's hurting more and more the older I get. <laughs> like, I don't like gracefully bounce like I used to. <laughs> I went through a stage when it was when I was in my childbearing years and every winter I would f- slip on the ice oh. and was getting ridiculous. One year I fell like three times <gasps> on the ice. Shoot. <laughs> Ended up at the chiropractor oh, for no. like the whole last trimester no, of my pregnancy because no. I couldn't walk if I didn't go every day. You are kidding me. It was. That is brutal. It was a disaster. But see, but that's the kind of just life stuff. Yeah. You know? And, but it is funny because I was like. I was so huge with my son. <laughs> and that was the one that I got really, really huge with. Yeah. And I could barely walk. <laughs> and I kept falling. <laughs> oh, it's and I, since I didn't really get that hurt, it, we can laugh at yes, it now. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. In the moment, I do try to say, are you okay? Yeah. <laughs> I don't always make it without laughing, but I do try to get the words out. <laughs> yeah. I frequently have like where I, I'm very concerned, but I'm also laughing. Laughing at the same yes, time. Definitely. And I don't know if that's, it probably seems really insincere, but. But we are who we are. <laughs> I mean, we can try to grow up, we can try to be mature, but we're going to giggle all the time about something. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about some of your readers are interested in ebooks versus paperback. Okay, so I'm super old school. I really love to hold a book in my hand. I The battery's not going to die. A child's not going to think they get to play a game on it and misplace <laughs> it. <laughs> You're not going to lose the charger. I do get the totally understand the benefit of ebooks where you can load them up and it's a lot cheaper. But there is something very 
fulfilling for me, like sitting in my house surrounded by actual books. Mm -hmm. I have books everywhere. It's a collection. Yes. Like if it if it doesn't physically exist, it's not a collection. Right. Right. And there's something about like swiping your finger across the screen versus holding the book in your hand and turning pages. The only advantage I can see is if you're trying to sneaky read something <laughs> <laughs> that you like, you know. Don't see, want. I'm I'm like I don't I don't know. I I like the convenience mm-hmm. of ebooks. Yeah. Like I a can lot. See that. Uh, especially if it's on your phone, then you can read in the dark. You mm-hmm. could read while you're waiting at the doctor's office without having like a ton of books with you. <laughs> right. And that's the other thing. You can have a ton a of ton. books with you. Yeah. Um, but I also just really like a book. I, I just know. really like having my my book there when I'm like snuggled up at home. So I'm it. kind of like, it just depends on the book. It yeah. depends on the day. Yeah. Now, let's give them something they didn't ask for. What about audiobooks? You know, I have never done audiobooks because I'm finally in a phase now. My baby is in second grade, so he went to school all day last year. I almost said yesterday. I finally sent him yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's middle of the year. That's kind of weird, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> and so until that time, I didn't feel like I have good uninterrupted listening time. Mm -hmm. I actually did better holding books because the children can play around me and I don't get distracted when the book is in my hand, you know? But do you remember that you have children when you're reading a book? (laughs) They're really good at reminding me. (laughs) (laughs) Hi, we're here. (laughs) I went through a phase where I could not read because I would neglect all of my motherly oh, duties. It's so bad, right? It's so, so I, bad. I literally did like did not read any books for many years. Yeah. Um, because I was worried about yeah. I'd like put the book down and I'd be like, oh, where's my two year old? Or when they're quiet. Yes, or when they're in bed, you're so dang tired, like you can't even read a book, you're falling asleep. Yeah. So there are drought years, definitely. Right. I and also, I don't drive that much. Mm-hmm. I actually love to drive, but I live, I joke all the time, my whole world is like a six-mile square radius <laughs> between the grocery store and Well, thank you for leaving school. that to yes. come over I here today. I really <laughs> broke new ground today. <laughs> so there's just not enough time. My yeah. drive to work, I just started a job this year. My drive to work is four minutes. Trust me, I've timed it. And... There's not enough time to even boot up. So I really don't do a lot of audio books. And then when I'm long distance traveling, I'm not in the mood to listen to the children yeah, you whine wanna... about my book. Oh, I, I like to <laughs> I like to do the audio books when I'm doing something that I absolutely hate. Yeah. So doing the dishes, folding laundry. Yes. I'm either like watching something uh-huh. or if I, if I can't be doing that, I like to listen to an audio book or a yes. podcast or something. I think that's how a lot of people are yes. starting to be. And I, because I don't. I think you're right. I don't, I didn't drive that much either mm-hmm. when I was staying home with my kids. And right. so it was kind of the same thing. I didn't have a super big need for too many audiobooks. Yeah. Yeah. But really, what I would like is a platform where I can have all of them. <laughs> and right. then. I can switch from audiobook to ebook or just go pick up my book. Right. They should sell packages <laughs> of all of, all of it. Well, you know how you get like DVDs now? Yeah. And it comes with like the digital one that you right. can download or watch yeah. online anywhere. Yes. Like they need to be doing this with books too, that would don't be you so think? Cool. That would be super cool. Because there are places you just can't listen, so then you could pull out Yeah, your then you pull out your, your book. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Cool. I need to take your advice on that because I only work like an hour a day. That's my awesome job. It gets me out of the house because I was going a little stir crazy at home all by myself. And writing, you know, a lot of people are like, but you write. I'm like, but writing is a solo endeavor. Yeah. So my whole day really is alone, whether I'm writing or And doing I can dishes tell you're or, super extroverted. Social. So that would be <laughs> I'm hard. good at extroverting for situations. Like oh, this. I see. I'm okay to be at home, but mm-hmm. not. I just found that's kind of how I am year, too. I'm kind yeah. of like I can go either way again, yeah. like right in the middle. Yes, but I'm finding I enjoy getting out. But my addiction—have you done Marco Polo? 
I have. Oh, good grief. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not addicted to it. My though, two sisters. Maybe and that's because my best I don't friend. have anyone fun Oof. like you to do it with. <laughs> it is. So that helps me get through my. Mm-hmm. My mom duties. I just set it on the kitchen counter and listen, and then I'll pick up and say my thing, and then listen to their responses. Like it's basically like a podcast with your best friends. Oh, that's an interesting it's way to do fun. it. It's very fun, but I would probably mentally benefit from doing something like yeah. <laughs> intellectual during those brainless activities that all of us moms have to do. Yeah, and and that was that was the thing with me was um, my brain has to be going probably a lot faster than other people's all the time. I'm not bragging or anything. No. <laughs> I'm not saying I'm smarter. That's just how my brain yeah. is. It's not always important stuff either. <laughs> but, and so it would help me kind of, I channel it. Yeah. And I, I would listen to podcasts and do YouTube channels yeah. that are kind of more like a podcast about crazy stuff. Yeah. Just anything to get me out of your head <laughs> not focusing on just washing dishes yeah. or whatever well because it becomes so monotonous yeah and you're just like i can't look at another dish mm-hmm. yeah but it has to be done it does someone's got to do it mm-hmm. and we all know who's not doing it yeah the other my stress members. level would go down if i if i do it that way or, i mean it totally. still does because actually now i work like full time and i still have to do all that I stuff know, <laughs> which is a lot so yeah so i'm like Doing something to occupy my mind makes my stress level go down while I'm doing that. Yes. I don't think everyone is like that. Well, you can't start thinking about everything that's coming up. Like, oh my gosh, then I have to do this and this and this and this and this and starting to feel overwhelmed. Mm -hmm. You're just, your mind is engaged in something else. I get stressed when I don't have anything to do. Is that weird? (laughs) Only if you're not not lazy. (laughs) Okay. It depends on the day for me. Yeah. If I some days I wake up and I'm like, there's nothing on my calendar, and that's really depressing. And other days I wake up and there's something on my calendar, and I'm like totally bummed by that. <laughs> <laughs> so it just depends on the day yes. and your mood. And if everything in my life could be mood related, it would be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, I I get that though. I've I've had days like that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that whole staying at home thing. Like there's no, you get used to not having a schedule. Yeah. And I actually would get stressed when I had like a busy week. Mm-hmm. Um, but once I get in that busy zone. Yes. I'm like. You're just busy, man. Yeah. You're just doing it. <laughs> I'm just doing it. There's nothing else. Just right. busy. No, I actually don't like being super busy. Yeah. But, um. It does help the days go by faster. It does. It does. <laughs> it does. Especially if you love what you're doing. Yeah. That really helps. It does a That ton. really helps. Absolutely. So what would you do if you weren't a writer? I think that's a terrible question. <laughs> <laughs> because now we dig deep to the truly who I am. <laughs> I don't even know because I would be a professional traveler and nobody can do that. I'm not Rick Steves. Actually, I wouldn't do it Rick Steve style because he's, I'd be like a professional lounger in the forest, <laughs> <laughs> just traveling around seeing different Because he does places. like hard traveling. Yeah. Like he walks everywhere. He can't yeah. just go look at the Leaning Tower of Pisa. He has to go right. to the top of it. Yes. And then tell us all about it and <laughs> learn stuff. And that's yeah. just Oh, exhausting. yeah. He has to like do all this research and stuff. <laughs> right. It's the worst. Yeah. But I honestly, I mean, as non-motivated as it may sound I was perfectly content being a mom and Mm -hmm. just doing that stuff and I always wanted to be an author so being an author and a mom is the coolest yeah I don't know what else I would do that's why I don't have a college degree (laughs) because I sat in college classes for two years and was like I mean I'm getting all my generals done but I don't know what I want to do I'm a super late bloomer Mm -hmm. (laughs) I still had some growing up to do um, I, I'd probably just be content to just be me. Yeah. You know? Well, and that's m- what most authors are. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really change that much right. about your life unless you, like, become J.K. Rowling. Right. But, or is it Rowling? Whatever her name is. 
um, it doesn't really change that much about your life because it is kind of a slow process. Yeah. It's yep. super slow. It is slow, and you do it by yourself in your home, mm-hmm. and, you know, there's millions and millions of books out there for people to find. Yeah. And so the chances of you being JK, right. Rowling Rowling, whoever, is really <laughs> small. And she wasn't even JK Rowling until... Yeah. Like, what, book five came out or something? Yeah. I hadn't even heard of her yeah. or her books until they were starting to make movies. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, I wasn't her target demographic, though. But, right. I but, mean, still, yeah. um, she wasn't, like, superstar until the movies started coming yeah. out either, yeah. so. Yeah, but I like my life. Mm-hmm. Like, I feel like I made choices that got me where I am on purpose. You know? Yeah. So, I don't know that I'm ever the type of person, personality-wise, that would be a highly driven career person. Mm-hmm. I li- I live in kind of a place where I like to tell stories. I love the flexibility of being my own boss, you know, and kind of traveling and coming and going and just taking care of my people. That yeah. makes me happy. So I don't know what I would choose for a career. We, I think we need more people like that, don't you think? Well, I, I mean, yeah. the way we raise our children is so important. Yeah. And we keep de-emphasizing that in our culture. Yeah. And, like, putting it on teachers and stuff or something. Yeah. yeah. And TV yeah. and tablets and stuff. Yeah. And I think we definitely need to re-emphasize just having someone there yeah. to raise somebody. Yeah. I was thinking the other day how, what a privilege it is, how much I like that my kids just know I'm there. Mm-hmm. You know, and I'm often the mom that the teenage group calls and is like, can you drive us here? Can we hang out here? Can we, you pick us up? And I'm, I love that even the friends know, oh, their mom is always around. She'll mm-hmm. help us out. She'll be there. I like being that person in their lives that is somebody that's there and that they can count on. So I don't know what I'll do when they're all gone. No. <laughs> I'm going to keep writing. I, well, yeah, I'll be the grandma you can that's keep there. Writing. Yeah, I bet you'll still have plenty to do. My mom has stayed. My mom had, you have four kids, right? Uh-huh. My mom had seven kids. Oof. And she, she spaced us way out. Yeah. Way out. When my youngest brother was born, my oldest brother was 21, I want to say, oh or something. Oh, my gosh, yeah. Maybe even older. Yeah. Because I, yeah, anyway. Of of course, I was supposed to be the last. (laughs) Eight years later, my little brother came along. Oh my gosh. Were you just super upset about that? No, I wasn't super upset until he started acting like a little brother. Mm. Like around the toddler ages. And then I was like, this is ridiculous. (laughs) This is annoying. (laughs) I basically am like a last you know how a last child is kind of messed up i basically (laughs) am a messed up last child because i was for eight years and i was the baby girl too so there's that yeah but yeah (laughs) (laughs) i loved my little brother so much well i mean i still love him but, but like i loved him so much he was like a little doll in a toy but he hated my guts oh like he didn't because his personality he didn't want to be touched and cuddled and you know so we had some rough years yeah. trying to figure that out and then the age difference just that's big difference made it kind of hard that but it's tough <laughs> <laughs> he always thought that I didn't like him and then one day I was like you know what I loved you so much and I would always squeeze you and hug you and kiss you and want to play with you and you just didn't want to be around me you didn't like Want you that. didn't like that. Mm-hmm. And so you would always, like, yell at me and get me in trouble and stuff. And he's like, oh, oh okay. And, like, <laughs> it changed his whole perspective on our relationship. Right. And she's like, oh, she does love me. I was just a difficult child. <laughs> yes, put the blame back on him where it yes, belonged. Yes, that's right. I like that. And I learned that from being the last child for eight years. I bet you did. <laughs> That's how I learned how to manipulate people and get what I want. <laughs> That's right. But you never do that to your husband in case he's listening. No. No. no never. Obviously. Mm-mm. And you I know where the line is. Right. And I'm not smarter than him either. No. <laughs> <laughs> where do you lie in your family? I'm the oldest. Do you, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And how many siblings do you have? I have three younger than Three. Me. Yeah. Yep. And I'm the boss and the favorite <laughs> and the best at everything. <laughs> The joke when they wanted me, you know, I was putting together my author bio for my books. I 
didn't actually submit this, but I typed a line in there that Aspen Hadley's the favorite child in her family. And then I sent that screenshot to my sisters <laughs> and then deleted it and sent it to Cedar Fort. But I, I let them think for a little bit that that was totally going to my Did they think novels. it was funny? Oh, yeah. Because I do that joke. kind of stuff to my siblings all the time, but they don't think I'm funny. They just like either ignore it or just get mad. That's rude. No, it's a big joke. Me and my sisters are always like trying to get my dad to send a text that'll say you're my favorite so we can screenshot it to each other. <laughs> he knows he's in on the game, but it's been pretty funny. <laughs> so yeah. My my oldest sister, we all knew that she was my brother is the oldest, mm-hmm. but then I have an oldest sister who's right after him, right? Uh-huh. And we all know that she's the favorite. And <laughs> One time at a family reunion, my mom was updating, like, the whole extended family about what was going on. She starts talking about my oldest sister. And I'm not even, I'm not even going to say her name because <laughs> – She doesn't deserve that. She, yeah. I don't want to give her, like, that credit, you know. Right. And my mom says – and then my oldest daughter, and she's doing this and that and everything's so great and she's just perfect. <laughs> <laughs> me and my sister that's right above me, because uh-huh. there's four of us, we we went, I knew it! In front of everybody at the whole family reunion, everyone was like, whoa, what's going on? They were like, we knew she was your favorite. I mean, we were joking, but right. it was... Stuff it was, got real there. For yeah, that. It, it did. It, that is it was... so funny. <laughs> <laughs> I think my sisters know deep down, though, that I am. And that's got to be painful I for them. I think that <laughs> – I, I think that the oldest sister probably is close <laughs> to being perfect, though, right. because you really had to go through a lot, right? Obviously. Like, you probably helped raise them. I and, mean, diaper changes. And did a lot of the cleaning and yeah. everything. Mm-hmm. I do that with – I'm my oldest daughter, she – I only have three, so mm-hmm. – <laughs> But yeah, my oldest daughter, she is, she's so good. Like she, she can clean a house better than my husband can. They're super, you know, amazing. And and she'll she'll actually do it yeah. too. And yeah. so yes. when I need something done, I ask her so because on. I can't count on the ten year old <laughs> no. and the five year old no. for anything at all, except for to give me gray hairs. Right. So yeah, oldest daughters really they are, are special. Great. I have one, and she's. Every time she complains about something, I'll be like, yeah, I'm the oldest. I get <laughs> what you're going through. Thank you for being you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I just let her be, like, grudgy about having to do everything. And just thank you right. so much for helping me because you're the only one I can count I on. Know. Oh, thank goodness for them. So you are very, very special. Well, thank you. <laughs> you heard it here. What are your sister's names? I'll tell them. <laughs> Will you? My uh, Camille. Camille. And Emily. Camille and Emily. Aspen is the favorite, and she is the most special <laughs> because she's the oldest daughter. Um, that's pretty official as far as I'm concerned. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You heard it here first. <laughs> or last. It's the last time you need to I hear mean, it. I mean, for today. Tomorrow, right. we'll get it well, to Well, this is source. going to go on the internet. <laughs> Which to is live like forever. everywhere. Yeah. yeah. For eternity. Yeah. So can't argue with that. It feels good. Good. <laughs> Glad I could make your day. Okay. So let's talk about motherhood. We we kind of went into this with reading, but let's go into it now with writing. Like, what's it like writing with kids? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> It's gotten a little easier with them being all in school if I can confine myself to school hours, which Mm -hmm. is really hard because writing for me is very much the same as reading in that when you get into the story, you don't want to be pulled out. Right. So if I sit down to write and it's really flowing and they start coming home, it's super hard to not get a little snippy or something and Mm -hmm. be like, okay, I'll be right out. Uh Uh-huh. Okay. Okay, can you tell me this story in a little bit? I'm almost done, you know? Yes. So I found I didn't write much over the summer when they were all home because it was so hard to it's impossible get into it and then pull out of it. Or right. they will come up and I think I said to my 11-year-old son, like, no less than 15 times this summer, 
dude, you just made me lose the sentence. <laughs> like I had, there was this like phrase and it was so great and I was about to write it and he'd come in and, you know, my chores are done or just something completely non-emergency type. Right. You know, so I wrote very little over the summer, but that's okay. I, my oldest turns 16 next week, which is a little uh, scary because, not because I have a teenager, I actually have really enjoyed teenagers so far. I have two of them. Um, but because it's hit me like there's two years left before she could do anything, really. She could go away to college. She could, I mean, really, the world's her oyster. And so if I try to maintain that perspective of, man, I'm going to have a lot of years to do what I want to do, but not a lot of years to be the mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll always be a mom, but, you know, mom on duty. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It helps me keep that perspective and not be upset if it takes a longer time to write a book because these are years I'm not getting back with them. That said, I don't always have a great attitude about it. (laughs) (laughs) I can talk a big talk and be like, oh, perspective, I love them. But, I mean, on the flip side of that, I've given 16 years to being a mom. And it's really fun to be a little selfish and kind of do something that I've always wanted to do. And so finding that balance of, okay, I'm going to write, and it's okay that you're not going to come home to a perfectly clean house today. I'll get the dishes done after you get home, and you can tell me about your day while I do the dishes Mm -hmm. instead of having it done or whatever, you know. So it's a juggling act as everything is. Right. But it's worth it to do something that you love. And the other thing I think has been really fun to watch is my kids watching me do something to fulfill a dream I have has motivated them to start talking about, well, what if I, maybe I would want to do this kind of thing, or they suddenly see, hey, you can have dreams, and you can work, and you can make them come true, and it's really cool to watch them watch me Yes, take the time out to do it. That is such a great point, and that is something that I've thought about a lot lately, because I, my mom, totally different generation, mm-hmm. since I was her youngest, mm-hmm. Um, even further apart in generations, right? Yeah. Her whole thing was all I ever wanted to do was to have kids. Mm -hmm. And so I got married young and I knew I wanted to stay home with my kids, but I also had all of these ambitions and talents and stuff. And um, I just sacrificed. I just sacrificed until all of my kids were in school and I had some time for myself. Yeah. And But I was really hard on myself about being that stay-at-home mom, and it's yeah. so important. And I don't – I'm not one of those people that's, like, judging moms who don't stay home no. either, though. But, like, for me, we felt like it was super, super important yeah. that I stayed home with all the kids until yeah. they were actual, like, humans <laughs> and not slobbery blobs. Do they become human? I'm still waiting. Well, just past that slobbery blob <laughs> stage, yes. you know, where they can walk and talk and yes. – and, get on a bus and go. <laughs> and and then then what I realized was I think it's equally as important that we as moms get out of the house yeah. and do really important stuff. Yeah. That is just as important as staying home and raising your kids. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's not going to kill your kids no. if they're babysat by somebody a couple days a week while you go join the PTA right. or you go join the city council or yeah. something like that. Yep. Those are really important things. They make yeah. an impact in your community. Yeah. And I'm a little disappointed in myself that I didn't realize this sooner, but I'm yeah. still young. Hey, we I'm get still there. in my 20s. We no. get there. <laughs> and I wouldn't change it. I was very much the same as you. This is... I really just jumped in, into being a mom. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was part of my process. Right. That's just that got me to where I am, and that's okay. Right. It just took me a little longer to get around to doing it. But, I mean, I still have a good 40 years left. Right. Of this Yeah, life. that's so a good point. it's okay. Right. That's a really you good know? point, is you can, you can... Do it all. Maybe not all at once. (laughs) Right. But you can do it all eventually, you know. Yes. I mean, if you want to go have 12 kids, maybe you can't do it all. Sorry. That would be. That's a different story. Yeah. (laughs) But, you know, 
I think most moms probably can. I think we get feeling like when we're stuck at home, well, and not stuck because it was a choice. Right. But when we're at home and we feel stuck, that um, we'll never do anything after that, you know? And then you get teenagers and they're like, you're just as busy as yeah. you are with babies. Oh, yeah. You're like, what the heck? I I've thought I'd have time. Yeah, I was really surprised as well. Yeah. But um, you can still do stuff. You can still write a book. Or I think sometimes you feel like because you chose to stay home, you have to be home. Mm-hmm. You know, well, I chose to be here and I want to be here. So this is where I have to be. Because if I go out and I'm, quote, playing and doing my things all day, then I'm not being a good mom. Mm. And that's not true. I mean, I had really good examples of that in my parents, and I probably should have taken a page out of their books a little more. But they just included us in their hobbies. Mm -hmm. My mom's a singer and a musician, and I traveled around with her. I just sat in the audiences and listened, and that was totally fine. And my dad is a mechanic, and we spent a ton of time with him in the garage and then going and trying the things out or up in the hills on ATVs. He just brought us along on his hobbies and mm-hmm. their hobbies became our hobbies. We, our family's very musical and our family's very grease monkey and we just joined in with them and I, they didn't give themselves up all the way. Certainly right. they sacrificed. I'm not saying they dragged us along everywhere, right? But, but they included us. That's a better word. They included us. It became a family Yeah, hobby. and that goes to my point, and you know. I love that. That you can, if you're out doing these things, like I was using big examples, like being part of city council or whatever, <laughs> but um, things that a lot of moms might say, I can't do that. I stay home. I'm, right. you know, I can't do that. Right. Think of the impact that has on your children yeah. and how important that is as well. Yeah. Changing the world as just staying home too yeah Yeah, it absolutely i think we think in like very or maybe it's just me (laughs) maybe it was just me but i think a lot of people think in very black and white terms that there's like this line where you're either at home or you're a working mom yep and i think we should blur that a little bit maybe do a few other little things have a few things that are for you Mm -hmm. you know i could have been better about that but i didn't know any better at the time yeah i just did what i had to do to survive those trench years. Yeah, that's true. I mean, you're definitely, especially you're like when it. you're ha- actively having babies. Uh-huh. You're just surviving. You're just surviving, yeah. You're not trying to empower yourself. Right. You just want to sleep and eat. Yeah. <laughs> you're just so, trying to power yourself, right. not empower Literally yourself. survive it. Yes. Yeah, that's very true. And if you are a mom and you're at that stage right now, you know, um, take heart that it'll be over soon. Yeah. And all your feelings are normal. <laughs> yes, it is totally normal. You can normal. always love, but not always like, and that's totally normal. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yep, it's it's rough, but you can get through it. And see how glorious we are on the other side? Yeah. Guys, it's worth it. You'll get there. <laughs> yes, and, and you have, um, you've been in the trenches, you know, you got your war stories. <laughs> Right. That just make you, I feel like being a mom and running my household really prepared me for the stuff I'm doing now, too. Yeah, yeah. You know? For sure. Sometimes I get a little uh, crazy because I'm so used to doing everything on my own and mm-hmm. by myself mm-hmm. and not having to, like, work Answer with other anyone. people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm just like... It's been two minutes. Why? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. No. Or no. like on a weekend night, I'll try to be like, today you should probably ask your husband what he would like to do. <laughs> and then I'm like, okay, this time it's going to work. You're going to ask him and you're going to mean it. <laughs> you get so used to being the boss, right? Right. <laughs> of everything. Yeah. And are you like a totally different person when you're parenting than you are Oh, absolutely. Like the real adult yeah. Aspen. That's how I am as well. Like, I, I feel like if people at work or even church or wherever mm-hmm. saw me at home, like, being mom, yeah. they'd probably be horrified. <laughs> you know, people say to my kids all the time, oh, you're so lucky. You must have so much fun at home. And I'm like, we do have fun. We dance around in the kitchen all the time. We sing. We laugh. There's, there's happiness in our home. But... I don't joke around. Mm -hmm. And they have chores and expectations and they are very respectful and 
were disciplined. And so I do think all the time, I think it's so funny. Yeah. People are like, your mom's so upbeat and you guys must have, no, it's not a party house. Yeah. And at the same time, it's like your kids <laughs> don't know the real you either. Yeah. You know, they only know mom you. Yeah. And my daughter, she's 14. She's my oldest. She's starting to get where she's seeing me elsewhere. Yeah. She sees me talking to people at church and yeah. stuff. And she's like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> like that's, well, that's actually me yeah. that's that's real me yeah you always get mommy <laughs> right and mommy needs the dishes done now <laughs> thank you right yeah well that doesn't end i so i just started this job i'm working the front desk at an elementary school an hour a day but it happens to be the elementary school where my mom teaches mm-hmm. and it's even this year i mean she retires this year so she's mid 60s and i'm early 40s Even now, I came home and told my husband, it's been really fun to see mom in her professional environment and to see my mom as like, this is how she is with her peers. This Mm -hmm. is how she is in trainings, how she is with the principal, how she is with students. I'm seeing a new side of my mom at this age because I'm now thrown into her professional environment. And that's been really fun to see my mom in that way. Instead of mom See and grandma. multiple personalities. Yeah, yeah. That's been kind of fun. I'm like, this was good for me to have another layer of my mom that I get to see yeah. and interact with. I had a similar experience with my mom as well because she is an excellent um, teacher, mm-hmm. um, gospel teacher. Uh-huh. And she's been teaching gospel doctrine and stuff for ever. Uh-huh. But, I mean, I haven't lived at home or and when I did I didn't I wasn't in those classes so I've I've never actually seen my mom teach Mm -hmm. before and um and when that that day when that hit me and I was like wow I have no idea what my mom is like as a teacher it's like mom can I bring my kids over (laughs) and we'll do the come follow me Uh with you uh and you can you can teach us, and then I'll get to see you teach before you die. <laughs> and, you know, see that other side of you. Yeah. Because we're, we're all, we're like schizophrenics, moms. We yeah. have all these, not just hats that we wear, but personalities, too. I mean, too. seriously. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And I, yeah, I think it's fun. I used to get embarrassed of my mom at the grocery store when she would talk to strangers. <laughs> Because right. I was like, who are you? What have you done with my mom? You can't just talk to And now I do the see. same thing. Because you're desperate for like a little adult <laughs> And interest. you know, you're like, oh, she's a woman. She has kids. She understands. Hey. And do your kids every time they're like, so do you know them? Yeah. <laughs> oh, I don't. I've never no. seen that person before. <laughs> Okay, mom. Oh, so <laughs> or funny. like they've talked to my husband. They never drive with me to home from church because they're like, it, seriously, just we need our own cars <laughs> or we're walking. And I'm like, oh, I remember feeling that way about my mom. Yeah. She's never going to leave. We're going to be here literally till we die. <laughs> my mom church, was right? the same way. <laughs> and now I'm all, well, I get it. Because my 14 year old was complaining yesterday. Oh. And I'm like, I get it. I finally understand grandma. I get it. I need it. I need you to stop complaining about it. <laughs> Especially now that it's like so short, yeah. two hours, you you um you have to stay after and talk. Yeah. I think we need to bring back the potluck, the after church potluck. Right. And so that people can like hang out and eat and talk after it would church. Be so great. We used to waste so much time, like, between classes and stuff, didn't we? Yes. I totally got why they decided to take away that third hour because when I was doing um, primary chorister, and that's for people who aren't LDS, that's the singing leader for the children, Uh um, I would just be sitting there waiting and waiting and waiting for everyone to come in. Yeah. And we would would waste 15 minutes. Easy. Yeah. And then when the next group come in, you waste another 15 minutes. There's half an hour of wasted time. Yeah. Totally. So... Do you ever look back, I know it's only October and we've only been doing two-hour church for ten months, (laughs) and think, what did we even do for three hours? Yes. I'm like... I know. It's almost like it was never a thing at this point. I... I've transitioned so fully over. I just to wish two it would have happened um, 14 years uh-huh, ago uh-huh. when my daughter was born. Before I suffered through three hours with babies. Yeah. yeah. That's not oh, fair. That was brutal. Well, we should go back and we should add up how many extra hours we spent <laughs> at church versus now. Right. 
and then those are hours we don't have to go, I right? I good about that. Is that how it works? So I think <laughs> if that's, ba- then like when I turn 80, I'm just done. Right. I just stop going. Yeah, because it's been a long time. Right. A long time. Feels good. And I was consistently going to church every week, too. It was bad. So I really earned those hours. And heard, like, nothing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there was one adult lesson I went to one time where they were like, you have to come with your cup and, like, hold it out so the teacher can pour teachings into your cup. And I was like, um, I brought it, but my toddler won't get their hand off yeah. the top of it. <laughs> that <laughs> like, is so I true. Heard. I mean, I like your analogy, but it's not working for me mm-hmm. right now because my toddler's playing with my cup. <laughs> and also, like, the years when you have a newborn mm-hmm. and you can't even bring them for months because of RSV season or whatever. I know. We yeah. live. We, we survive. I like to think we're better for it. If nothing else, I have, like, major obedience points on my side. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just... <laughs> oh. It's really <sighs> hard sometimes, isn't it? It is. But, um, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. It's just really hard sometimes. <laughs> and the end. I up. don't have any other wisdom <laughs> about that. It just is what it is, and you get through it. Yep. And then it's done, and... um. I'm just ready for grandkids now. <laughs> yeah, the disappointing part is my baby's seven. So I have like a couple more years to get through. <laughs> yeah. Minus five. So we're still dealing with the the fake cry, oh you know, gosh. over everything. Mm-hmm. Everything. Mm-hmm. Every, <laughs> everything. It's, it's be... like so fake. Uh, it's so Oh, it's just no. the worst. Like, you're my third child. You don't think that I know this game already? <laughs> right. Knock it off. Well, I'm going to turn and walk away now. <laughs> what? And then they just scramble up and follow you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <man. sighs> All right. Well, let's talk about, before I let you go. Okay. Let's talk about your other book. The uh, let's do it. Blind Dates, Bridesmaids, and Other Disasters, because that one sounds really fun this as well. This one's so fun. I had the best time with this book. So I had this idea, and I wish I could remember what sparked it, but, like, things that aren't important flee my brain, so I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> but I had this idea. I was on a Facebook moms group, and I just posted on there, is there anyone who'd be willing to share with me bad blind date stories? Because I thought it would be fun to write a story about kind of not the whole story is not uh, only about dating but mm-hmm. to incorporate some bad dates into a story and i got 700 responses whoa it was overwhelming and so fun like i had so much fun reading through it and the mom's group like went wild all commenting on each other's and stuff so i chose like the top 12 that i thought were most humorous and stuff contacted them asked them if they'd be willing to let me use it in a novel and so that kind of got me started off I had these 12 bad dates so then I um, incorporated them into this story so it's about a girl named Rachel and she's her roommate has just gotten engaged so that's where the bridesmaids part comes Mm -hmm. in And she challenges Rachel to start dating again. And so she goes on these blind dates while she's also a bridesmaid helping plan weddings. Or the wedding, not weddings. Um, And in the meantime, her first kind of long lost love from seven years before resurfaces because he's the brother of the girl getting married. Mm -hmm. And so it's them, their kind of second chance romance while she's going on all these blind dates while she's helping plan this wedding and it is it's so fun (laughs) I had so much fun writing this book um and I've people will comment or send me messages or whatever on social media and be like there's no way those dates are true and I'm like no they're true they are 100% (laughs) I even put in the front of the book like I thanked the Facebook people for their says gratitude to the women of Facebook who shared with me their dating stories and allowed me to use them. Every date Rachel goes on is based on a true story from you. They are all true, which makes it so delightful. What is it about blind dates that makes them so notoriously bad? I don't know. And I was so lucky that I never went on one. I never did either. I don't know. Um, Because you think you should be safe if it's a blind date where someone has set you up. But 
No, it's not. I don't know. Is it like our expectation about it? It could be. It could be that, well, that was maybe about to sound mean, but maybe people who can't find dates normal ways, it's for a reason. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) That sounds horrible. I apologize to everyone I know and love who isn't dating but wants to be. Can we delete that? (laughs) I don't think so. I don't have any way to edit that out. I'm sorry. (laughs) Anyway, I don't know because it's not women that are weird. It's It's not the the women. You know, I mean, well, I was on a mom's group and I have talked to other men because this brought up when I told friends and family, holy cow, I got 700 comments. You know, it brought up a lot of discussions within my social group. But even then, it I, God, it was 99% stories about guys. It's not women that are weird. And so you can't blame women for not wanting to date because this is what's happening to them. I mean, they're weird. They're wacko. Give me an example. Oh, from like, the book. Uh, <clears throat> what's a good one? Well, one of them, okay, there's this guy. This is in the book. There's a guy who invites her to go fishing. So they he picks her up at like four o'clock in the morning, really early, right? And they go fishing. And on the way there, she sneezes. And he turns out as a germaphobe. He carries Lysol in his cup holder and sprays her down with it <laughs> after she sneezes. They get up there, they get onto the lake, he tells her they're not allowed to talk, so they sit on the lake for four hours in dead, <laughs> dead silence. Not one word she's not allowed to say anything, because it might scare the fish right. away. Right. And then when they get out, he, like, re her, and then he asks her to wash her hands, he follows her to the restroom and sings the, like, ABC song twice while he watches her wash her hands. I mean. It was just absolute craziness. So that's all totally true. The only thing I did was add in, like, conversation and stuff about it, right? So kind of flush out the story. But, yeah. I mean, there's another one where... I'm trying to think of the the really good ones, although I don't want to give the really good ones away. She gets hit by a car by one of her dates. Because he's just... (laughs) It's so, so dumb. <laughs> she gets taken to a little league baseball game. She thinks she's going to like a major league baseball uh-huh. game. She's going to little league with his and gets picked up in the minivan by the aunt whose son it is. And I mean, there's just so many and they were all totally true. But it's not, it's never a woman perpetrating the problem from the stories yeah. that I have gathered. And I think that's really interesting. Are we putting too much pressure on these guys to, like, come up with date ideas that they're just, I, don't I know. mean, like, they're at scraping the bottom of the bucket or something. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> because I, I mean, I could see if someone had called me and said, I'd like to take you out. Do you want to go to my nephew's baseball game? Okay. That seems that's like fine. a third or a fourth date to me. Right. But, like, give him a heads up. Yeah. Not just like, oh, the aunt is picking me up in a carload of children. What is happening? Yeah. You know, that was... That's one of the, well, that actually morphs into more, but I'm not getting into that because that date is especially delightful. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta You'll read have the book. to read the book. <laughs> yeah. Gotta read the book if you want to hear that one. But it's, it was so fun to write and I just laughed and laughed and was like, I just can't even believe these stories. So good luck to anyone who's out there in the dating pool. I know it's rough. Yeah. Maybe it, uh, it's just... A good idea to start a first date with somewhere where you can actually, like, talk. Yeah. And get to know Not somebody. Not just, like, go. You know? Yeah. Like, here I am at a... Like, once you've determined that they also like sitting in a boat silently for four hours, <laughs> right. then you can plan that date. Um, I, like, normally like to talk to you and get to know you a little bit, but yeah. spray me with Lysol and slap me in the middle of the lake for four and hours silently. How about, ladies, you ask before you go what <laughs> you're doing. Right. Help him out and be like, you know what? That doesn't sound like a great first date. Right. Let's just go to dinner. (laughs) Maybe we just keep it super simple. Yeah. Yeah. So some of them were, I mean, I know people think that I made them up, but truth is stranger than fiction. I could not have come up with anything better. There's something wrong with hand washing guy, though. Oh. That's (laughs) that's not right. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. He needs counseling. He does. He needs help. Probably like touches every lamppost that I he mean, goes by. Right. You know, like monk. Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> what a weirdo. So sorry if that was offensive to those still in the dating pool, but <laughs> there are some guys out there that are alone for a reason. That's all. <laughs> We'll just try to sum it up in a more friendly way. Maybe we need to start a podcast where we can help them, you know? <laughs> like, tell us what you're call thinking us about in, Yeah, <laughs> tell us what, you're, what this blind date is that you're thinking, and then we'll help you. And like, every Whoa. time our answer will be, just take her to dinner, <laughs> right. okay? Like every time. Like somewhere quiet where you can talk and get to know each other. Right. And then if it you hit it off then you can plan a weird second date or third date or whatever right. crazy people jeez <laughs> oh man all right so what are you working on next so my husband and i took our two daughters so we have two boys and then or two girls and then two boys we took our daughters on a trip last summer to galveston island texas and it Wait, was, Galveston is an island? Uh-huh. Oh, okay. And it was, <laughs> we loved it, but on the island there's some mansions that were built like right around 1900. Mm -hmm. So we toured one, it's huge, it was like 2700 square, or 27,000, 2700, that's a normal people Yeah, that's, house. A, that's, oh, I, I was in a mansion. <laughs> yeah, 27,000 wow. square feet. I mean, it was gorgeous. And I was just like, I need to set a story here. So I'm working on a story right now where she leaves. Same thing, comedy, romance. Uh -huh, romantic romantic comedy. Comedy. <laughs> comedy. That's what that romance, genre is called. Thank genre. you. Genre. <laughs> um, yeah, so she leaves her, she takes a sabbatical from her job and goes to see this place that was important to her. Um, an elderly woman in her life. Not her grandmother, but like her grandmother's best friend. Kind of, I guess, maybe like a godmother if, mm -hmm. if that relationship makes it easier to understand um and ends up getting hired on there in a temporary position kind of before they realize who she is or how she's tied to the family and it's just her experiences kind of coming into herself and and just the funny things that happen on the mm -hmm. island and um and as she seeks her freedom from kind of an overbearing mom left back in her hometown comes to figure herself out so i'm still working on it i'm like Probably a little more than three quarters of the way done with the first draft, and then I'll pick that apart. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and write something completely different, and then we'll submit that. <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you do? Are you so really my, hard on yourself? I'm not really hard on myself, but I'm not. My first drafts are like a conversation like we're having. It's how oh, really? I think of it. Like, I'm just telling the story. Hmm. Like, when you sit down around the dinner table... And you tell a story about your day. You don't self-edit. Oh, right? I see what you mean. And so, so it's kind just, of more like an outline. Yeah, I just okay, kind of tell yeah. the story. Mm -hmm. And I do outline and do a little bit of plotting before I start writing. But I'm not hard on myself as far as oh, that word or mm -hmm. you've used too many of the word laugh or whatever. I just tell the story. And then the second draft, I go through and really clean it up. Yeah. I'll be like. like you layer it, right? Yeah. That's what that's what I do as well. Yeah. Yeah. I'm actually getting better where I don't have to do as much revising yes. yes it gets as easier I used and to. easier yeah yeah because my first book took me like oh god it was like an 18 month process mm -hmm. between beta readers and editing and all this stuff before I felt like it was ready to submit and my second right. book it was like three months yeah you know you just write it and there was less that needed to be fixed and mm -hmm. before the I, I, I think you feel more confident about the process too yeah yeah like I already know I can write a novel that will make sense. So right. I'll just write it. <laughs> Not worry about that so much People or something. People said the first one was okay. So I'm going to try it again kind of yeah. thing. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. So working on that, hoping to get my first draft totally done and ready. Maybe even second draft by the end of the month. Wow. Ready to go to beta readers. That that's what I'm hoping. The holidays mess stuff up. And that's mm -hmm. fine. They it, do. It just is what it is. Just get it done before summer and you'll be fine. <laughs> That's the goal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and where can everybody find you on social media? So I'm on Instagram at Aspen Hadley Author. And then I'm on, actually, Facebook is the same, Aspen Hadley Author. Um, and that's about it for social media. But I'm on there pretty much every day. I'm pretty active on there. So your Facebook is a 
page? It's a page. Okay. Uh-huh. Yep. So you can either type in at the at symbol Aspen the writer, and that would pull up the page, or Aspen Hadley dash author. Okay. Awesome. Uh huh. And then Instagram is Aspen Hadley, all one word, underscore author. All right. Well, yeah. thank you for... Thanks for having me and my inappropriateness. Yes. Oh, please. <laughs> I think everyone knows by now that I am just as bad, if not worse, than you. Unless you were holding back. I was very well behaved. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it'll be interesting to see what happens when I turn off the recording. And <laughs> see what you really like. Right? Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, well, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you for having me.